Greetings, beloved brethren. We have a very important study to look at this evening. A very controversial topic, and that is pertaining to the Paycheck Protection Program that was initiated over the time of the coronavirus pandemic by the United States government. <clears throat> Many people have taken issue um, to the association accepting assistance from the government and have made a lot of criticisms, all of which are unfounded in inspiration. So by God's grace, we are going to clear the air once again and produce the straight truth on the matter. And we pray by God's grace that souls may not be misled, but may be led into all truth by the work of God's appointed shepherds. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, high and mighty who lives in heaven, we give you thanks for all your wonderful deeds, all your wonderful works, preserving us as individuals and preserving your church up to this time. We know that Satan is here with wrath to deceive because he knows that his time is short. We just pray that you would put a hedge of protection around your little ones, and we pray that your voice would work and speak to the hearts and minds of those that are against thee in any way, shape, or form. In Christ's name we ask, amen. All right, so we're going to deep dive into the issues pertaining to the Paycheck Protection Program and government assistance in general. Now, all of our decisions are based upon what inspiration teaches. We operate by a thus saith the Lord. That's it. We do no more and no less. Now, what does inspiration teach about government assistance? Let's go to Answerers Book 5 and page 64. Question, is it wrong for a Christian to accept support from government relief agencies? Answer, we're going to hear the answer from God's rod. Under federal pension and social welfare provisions, the government's old age and relief funds, right? Old age and relief funds, funds that are to relieve poverty, are just as legitimately available to its citizens who are church members as to its citizens who are not church members. These provisions are as legitimately available to the church members as to the non-church members. And this makes good sense because just because someone is a church member doesn't mean that they lose their rights as a citizen. It doesn't mean that they will not have any arrears or um, troubles in their life as may befall another citizen. They are a citizen in the same country and they may be subject to the same economic crisis. Now, does that mean that God will not provide for his children? No, God has many ways of providing for his children. And the government is one of the ways. According to the rod, let's finish this statement. Thus, the Christian as a citizen has no less moral right. The Christian's morals do not bar the Christian from obtaining government relief. The Christian as a citizen has no less moral right to accept relief from his government 
then as a church member, he has right to accept relief from his church. Now, this is a profound thought. If you can accept relief from the church as a church member, then as a citizen of the country, you have the right, you have the same amount of right to accept reliefs, relief from the government. Now, many believe in getting assistance from the association. Surely, many believe in that. But do we believe in getting assistance from the government? Why is it okay to get relief from the association only? Many actively seek support from the association. Well, according to the ROD, if you can seek support from the association or relief from the association, you also can from the government. And anything that's true for us as individuals is true for us as a body. If we as individuals can do it, then we as an association can do it too. Because the association is composed of the members. What would make it sin for the association and right for a person? Let's continue the question. Is it wrong for the association to accept money? Should the association accept money from kings, governments, if there are no strings attached? If there were strings attached that would cause us to violate religious principle, then it would be wrong. But if there are no strings attached, would it be wrong? Answer. Only the true association has to obey the commands of the Lord in the golden bowl. This is Bashan's answer, right? We, this, we, are the, we are the only ones who have to obey the command. So false associations can do what they please. And they can operate in a way that will slow up the work because they don't have a divine ordination. All the other associations can act as they wish since they are not God's ordained association. God's true association will always follow all of God's requirements in the golden bowl. In regard to accepting money from the government, the Lord tells us this. The Lord still moves upon the hearts of kings and rulers in behalf of his people. Those who are laboring for him are to avail themselves of the help that he prompts men to give for the advancement of his cause. The agents through whom these gifts come may open ways by which light, the light of truth may be given to many benighted lands. So the kings and rulers may give gifts that can spread the gospel. These men may have no sympathy with God's word, no faith in Christ, no acquaintance with his word, but their gifts on this account are not to be refused. It's not to be refused because of any of those things. Their gifts on this account are not to be refused. If there are no strings attached, it would be disobedience for us not to accept the money. God bless you. We are told that we are not to refuse them. Therefore, if we would obey, we would accept them. Continuing the same article neck on paragraph four. Some may question the propriety of receiving gifts from unbelievers. Let such acts themselves who is the real owner of our world? Hmm. So the spirit of prophecy says, if one has a question about accepting gifts from unbelievers, they should ask themselves, who is the real owner of our world? To whom belong its houses and lands, its treasures of gold and silver? If we can answer this question, 
we would know the answer to that question. We would know that God owns these things. So they belong to God and they belong to God and they can be used for God's work because they belong to God in the first place. Although now almost wholly in the possession of wicked men, all the world with its riches and treasure belong to God. So most of it is in the possession of wicked men. Does it mean that it is to be barred from God's use? No, it belongs to God. He has them only as stewards to see if they will be faithful. To see if they will turn to God. And to also teach a lesson. That. Wealth does not make happiness, and wealth cannot save us. And oftentimes it is a hindrance. And we as his people are not ready yet to put all these means to good use. But we're going to see by the more sure word of prophecy that it will come to God's people. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Every beast of the forest is mine and all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. It is truly the Lord's money not the government's money. It is not just okay for the Lord's final association to use the Lord's money to move the work forward. It is what God wants us to do. Since this is exactly what Satan fears, he will have his agents oppose and criticize the association. Even when they profess the highest motives and concerns, do not be deceived. The, they identify themselves by the direction and content of their criticism and complaints. Is it with the golden bowl or is it against it? They are serving the enemy's purpose when they criticize God's work. Mark them carefully and do not listen to them, for they do not speak in the name of the Lord. God bless you. That's the association's answer. Now, do we have an incident, an inspiration where God's people accepted money and relief from the government? Ezra chapter 6 says, Then Darius the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of the rolls, where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And there was found at Akmetha, in the palace that is, in the province of the Medes, a rule, and therein was a record thus written. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. See what he's concerned about? He's concerned about the church. This is the king of Persia. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifices and let the foundation thereof be strongly laid, the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits, three rows of great stones, and a row of new timber, and let the expenses be given out of the king's house. Cyrus the king made a decree, and he said, let the, let the church of God be built. The king of Persia, built the church. That was his decree. He wanted to build the temple of the Lord out of the Persian government's money. Continue. And also let the golden and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took forth out of the temple, which is at Jerusalem and brought unto Babylon, be restored and brought again unto the temple which is at Jerusalem, everyone to his place, and place them in the house of God. Praise the Lord, to his name be the glory. 
He is the restorer. And though his house was marauded and damaged and polluted and ransacked, he had the Gentiles rebuild it and bring him back the glory. Now, therefore, Tatnai, governor beyond the river, Shethar Bosnai, and your companions, the Afar Sakites, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing all these right, I'm doing my best, which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. Let the work of this house of God alone. So he's commanding that they uh, touch not his, uh, the Lord's prophets and, and do them no harm. That's what this king is, is, is commanding. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Moreover, I make a decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given unto these men that they may not be hindered. So the workers, they, as, they're, as they're having expenses um, for their own efforts, he's saying, listen, let this be paid for so that they not be hindered. They're getting government support for this work. And that which they have need of, both young bullocks and rams and lambs for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven. Wow, even this, even this, the worship itself, he's he's paying for it. We salt wine and oil according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem. Let it be given them day by day without fail. He's trying to finance the whole thing that they may offer sacrifices of sweet savors unto the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. And the king was a wise king because he knew why this was to be done, because he knew that he would get more than what he was putting in, that the ministers of God could pray for the life of the king and of his sons. A wise king. And that is an example for our day. What is, what is to take place during the loud cry of the third angel's message? It says in Isaiah 60, verses 9 to 11, surely, surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them they're going to bring their money unto the name of the lord thy god and to the holy one of israel because he hath glorified thee they're going to see this kingdom as an ensign and they will want to be a part of that kingdom and they're going to give all they have and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister unto thee yes the rulers they're going to govern the governors they're going to come to serve the, the, the priests, the 144,000 of the kingdom, the priests and rulers, for my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. And the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Amen. And that will be brought to perfect fulfillment during the Davidian kingdom. Back to the question. Is it wrong for a Christian to accept support from government relief agencies? Under federal pension and social welfare provisions, the government's old age and relief funds are just as legitimately available to its citizens who are church members as to his citizens who are not church members. Thus, the Christian as a citizen has no less moral right to accept relief from his government than as a church member he has a right to accept relief from his church. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty nitty -gritty of this, the facts. 
looking at the U.S. Department of the Treasury's website. The Treasury Department is delivering COVID-19 relief for all Americans. Remember what the Rod said. It's as legitimately available to the citizens who are church members as the one who are not church members. This act is for all Americans. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act and Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2021 provide fast and direct economic assistance for American workers, families, and small businesses and preserve jobs for American industries. The Paycheck Protection Program is providing small businesses with the resources they need to maintain their payroll, hire back employees who may have been laid off, and cover applicable overhead. So what are they trying to do? They are helping the businesses support their employees. They are going to help the citizens, the workers. And this is a part of the Paycheck Protection Program is a part of the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Remember, the ROD says it's okay for us to accept relief. That's what that R stands for in CARES. And this Paycheck Protection Program is designed to help small businesses maintain their payroll, hire back employees who may have been laid off and cover applicable mm -hmm. overhead. Now, there was an article that was produced, which produced a lot of false information and demonstrated that the individual was not a close reasoner and a logical thinker, but rather a bait hunter. And we as true Davidians cannot be bait hunters. Now, this says the Adventist Church, the SDA Reformed Church, is a shepherd's rod and independent ministry has received over 75 million in taxpayer money. Let's check the validity of that statement. Whose money is it anyway? Most people believe the PPP loan is funded by the government. It isn't, at least not in the in the beginning. When you receive funding for a PPP loan, you are receiving the bank's money, not the government's. Banks are careful about their treasure chests, money entrusted to them by depositors and watched over by regulators. The government doesn't immediately transfer the money for this program into local hands. Instead, the Small Business Administration provides the bank a guarantee. The program assumes that, in the worst case for the government, all the loans will be forgiven. Hence, the hard cap on the amount of guarantees available. Right, so what the government is doing is initiating something that the banks are facilitating and giving them a guarantee. Now, as the Paycheck Protection Program is, um, was established, there was an outline of how it actually functioned that was available on the Treasury's website. And we could see um, uh, how it is described. So the Paycheck Protection Program established by the CARES Act is implemented by the Small Business Administration with the support from the Department of the Treasury. This program, see who we did it, it's the Small Business Administration. This program provides small businesses with funds to pay up to eight weeks of payroll costs, including benefits. Funds can also be used to pay interest. Oh, I cut the page on mortgages, rent, and utilities. 
The Paycheck Protection Program prioritizes millions of Americans employed by small businesses by authorizing up to $659 billion toward job retention and, and certain other expenses. Small businesses and eligible nonprofit organizations, veterans organizations, and tribal businesses described in the Small Business Act, as well as individuals who are self-employed or independent contractors are eligible if they also meet program size standards, right, for small businesses. So they have um, different uh, uh, documents describing their program right here, uh, following. And I'm going to show you something very important, right, that you have uh, borrowers who is going to get the uh, loans, right? And then you have lenders. Why would you have a lender page showing that the government is not the lender actually directly? It's actually the banks. Now, how does that work in the background? There's a liquidity facility. The, to bolster the effectiveness of the SBA's Paycheck Protection Program, the Federal Reserve is supplying liquidity to participating financial institutions through term financing backed by PPP loans to small businesses. So the PPP provides loans to small businesses so that they can keep their workers on the payroll. The Paycheck Protection Program liquidity facility will extend credit to eligible financial institutions that originate PPP loans, taking loans as collateral at face value, right? So the Federal Reserve, uh, which um is the government's bank is supporting the banks in um in their extension of these loans so in actuality it's not taxpayer money And this is from the Federal Reserve's website. Shows how the government is backing this. Now, someone who is not a close reasoner and a logical thinker would not research the facts to find out how the program is actually being financed. Now, there is another false statement. It says, last year, the United States Congress passed the Paycheck Protection Program. For the first time in our nation's history, the federal government has subsidized clergy salaries across the country. Okay. What is the problem with this error? The article presents the information concerning the fact that churches receive the loans as if it was intended for churches in order to manipulate them. For the first time, um, the they have subsidized clergy salaries. Is that just a random act where they're just randomly just paying clergy salaries or subsidizing clergy salaries? Ironically, he admits at one point that the program was designed to help small businesses with fewer than 500 employees but then he blatantly misinforms the reader by saying that the big church organizations got most of the money. All in all, it undoubtedly impresses the idea that mon the money and the situation was used to take advantage of the churches who were susceptible and unfaithful. Now, this was provided for all, not just 
churches. So it was not something that was done to target churches in order to manipulate churches. Look at that. There's all of this money was given to the churches. Our federal government is literally supporting churches. This is an effort to establish an image of the beast and entangle the church. They call these tax subsidies and tax subsidies loans into churches. The money was more of a grant to fund religious purposes. All of that is false information. But Davidians cannot be caught up in this false doctrine because this is from a Laodicean perspective. Davidians know that the image of the beast cannot be set up until after Ezekiel 9. So why would we be worrying about that? Only Laodiceans with false doctrinal understanding make right articles and think based on this. Think like this. Davidians who have the rod message know better. There is a kind of deception which presents information in a certain way so as to cause someone to draw the wrong conclusion misleading right this is still bearing false witness there is some false statements in there but also there is some misleading information and misleading information is also false information and is also lying this error implies that there were strings attached right it says, meaning the money was more of a grant to fund religious purposes, thereby eroding even more of our U.S. Constitution. When our church schools began receiving tax dollars, how could how those funds, they started set conditions, how those funds could be used. Remember, they had to be used solely for secular purposes and what has been the result. So don't think for a second that taking tens of millions of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars doesn't change anything. This is all an assumption. This is all an assumption, for there was nothing of the fact in the loans at all. The Paycheck Protection Program Information Sheet, it authorizes $345 billion in forgivable loans to small businesses to pay their employees during the COVID-19 crisis. All loan terms will be the same for everyone. In bold, that's what they put. So if the loan terms are the same for the secular businesses and the churches, how could they be using it to manipulate the churches? Who can apply? All businesses, including nonprofits, veterans, organizations, tribal businesses, concerns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There were no strings attached, people. This is the application form. We can read it for ourselves. There's no strings attached here. There's nothing uh, controlling religious content. It says all loan proceeds will be used only for business-related purposes as specified in the loan application and consistent with the PPP rules, including the prohibition of using loans for proceeds for lobbying activities and expenditures, right? This is, we can go and see it for ourselves. All the documents are available. There is no strings attached. Okay, another falsehood that was in the article. The big church organizations got most of the money. This is just a blatant falsehood. This is a breakdown of the loan quantities um, by industry, right? And where is religious? The religious industry, religion is not even here.
look at the total net. Religious organizations, 7.3 billion. That puts religion, okay, I'm sorry, this is a separate uh, chart. That puts religion under mining, uh, which is, or under agriculture and forestry, which was 1.52%. The religious organizations would have been 18th. This is what the Paycheck Protection Program was for. What is the problem? People are running without being sent. The Lord said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Now, there is a deeper issue here, which the peddlers of false doctrine and false information do not understand. And that is the way that the Lord is orchestrating his work on the earth. Now, we are told in the Rod message that the headquarters of the church is in America. And there is a particular reason why it is. 1 TG 29. In verse 10, of all the nations in the world today, America, the nation in which are the headquarters of the church, is the richest. Why is the nation in which the headquarters of the church are in the richest? The land of Goshen stands as a symbol of the United States of America in which the church came into existence. Our Seventh-day Adventist church came into existence in USA. While our country is productive like the land of Goshen, the richest in the world, and a Protestant nation, it is the best for missionary work, for it is made up of all nations, and therefore like the land of Goshen, the most productive in Egypt. So it is very productive for missionary work. But what else? It says, moreover, as Jacob and his poster posterity the progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel went into the country of Goshen, not at the beginning of the years of famine, but rather in the second year. It again shows that their counterpart should not be looked for at the very commencement of the Christian era, but later, later in the Christian era, the um, children of Israel went into the land of Goshen. And they, the, later in their experience in the second year, and they are a type for us later in the Christian era. Moreover, we find that Elder White, whose given name, James, means the same as Jacob, fathered, organized his posterity, converts and associates, the founding fathers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the spiritual progenitors of the antitypical 12 tribes, the 144,000. The Adventist Church, the founding fathers of the, the Adventist Church are the spiritual progenitors of the 144,000, and this was done in the antitypical land of Goshen, away from the promised land. This is where this church was founded, and this is where the 144,000 will be produced. The country of Goshen, which God disposed Joseph to give to Israel in their absence from their homeland, was the best in the land of Egypt. There, amid superb surroundings and other favored circumstances, Joseph provided for all their needs. So, the church is in the land of Goshen, where we are having all our needs provided for. And who is Joseph? Joseph was the governor. That is why the church is headquartered in the United States, so that it may prosper in the economic environment that it is in and have religious liberty for the sealing of the 144,000. So in the antitypical years of famine in the gospel dispensation, Christ must have, as the figure shows, 
provided his church with the best land available while on her antitypical sojourn among the Gentile nations. There in the antitypical Goshen, she was nourished for a time, times and a half a time. This is where the church is being nourished. Thus, transparently clear is the twofold lesson that not that only for the sake of the church does the world today, today stand, and that without its light and vitalizing energy, life upon earth would become extinct as quickly as it would if the sun and the moon should withdraw their influence from the earth. The church is the life of the world. And the world that is using God's means, God's goods, definitely should provide for his church. This question was asked and answered in the Bayesian newsletter. For Bayesian has nothing to hide. Did the association apply for and receive PPP funds? If true, please explain. It is true the association applied for the PPP loan. The unintended consequence of the lockdown was an economic disaster. To alleviate the financial burdens created, the government offered monetary help to its citizens and loans to legal, profit, and nonprofit businesses and organizations. The association's main reasons for applying for the PPP loan were with brethren at home without income, there were decreases in tithes and offerings. The association saw the wisdom in protecting its headquarters payroll, ensuring that the workers would be able to meet their financial obligations. The treasurer applied for the exact amount of the payroll at headquarters and was diligent to use the funds exactly for that purpose. The PPP loan was later forgiven by the previous administration. With brethren worldwide unable to work, the association took up its moral responsibility to provide the group leaders or workers with food staples, such as rice and beans, to be distributed among the brethren who could no longer provide for themselves and their families. This is the part of the association's work. The association had to meet its payroll worldwide, provide for medical and other emergency situations, purchase COVID-19 prevention equipment and supplements, and still continue its financial obligations and duties to provide for second tithe and charity help that was not COVID-19 related. So we had our regular um, charity work and COVID-19 to deal with. The Lord saw fit to provide a way not only for his work for the church to continue through all of the media venues available, but also for his assistance to his people to be readily available as the need arose. Davidians here in this country all received personal assistance from the government, which was a great help to them. And the Lord provided as well for his association to continue with its mission. We praise the Lord for his provision, the PPP loan, for reason number one, payroll protection that created a financial buffer, for reason number two, domestic and foreign obligations. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. There were no strings attached to the government program and no violation of God's law. The Lord is good. So what is our lesson? Let us be God's real people, logical thinkers, not bait hunters. Let us not just run off on this article and that article or just take uh, accusations and criticisms to the bank. Let us find out the facts from the golden bowl and from reality. Let not your minds be influenced by reports and hearsay. We are not, we are commanded by the rod to not let our minds be influenced by that. Refuse to be influenced by evil reports, hearsay, ridicule, and character defamation. But there will always be hooks for the unbelieving and wicked. And we will close here. While God has given ample evidence for faith, he will never remove all excuses for unbelief. 
all who look for hooks to hang their doubts upon will find them. And those who refuse to obey, to accept and obey God's word until every objection has been removed and there is no longer an opportunity for doubt will never come to the light. And we're going to say a word of prayer now. Father God in heaven, we thank thee for thy mercy and thy loving kindness and for having this information for us. We pray that it will help the brethren worldwide and anyone who has any questions or doubts. And we pray that all will choose the light despite the hooks. In Christ's name, amen.